and I'm going to refer to this um, about three slides in uh, so that anybody who joins us later will be able to answer it as well. Is that okay? Okay. <clears throat> And we'll get started in about one more minute. Carolyn, do you see the captioner yet? No. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Spotlight on Academic Diagnostic Assessments. This is Information Fair Round 2A. We will give you an opening code for this uh, beginning session here, and it's DREAM, D-R-E-A-M. DREAM is the opening code, and I'll be posting the link where you can enter these codes in at the, at the very end of these sessions. Now, the way it works is, same way the uh, first uh, round of sessions work, we get, you get an opening code for the very first one, and you won't get one for the second one. In other words, you won't get one for round 2B, but you will get one for round 2C. It'll be a closing code for round 2C. So once again, the opening code is DREAM. Take it away. Okay. Hello, everyone. I uh, hope you had a good lunch and got to go outside and maybe hopefully enjoy some good weather. The weather here in Louisville is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I want to thank Mark for being our host for this session. And I want to welcome absolutely everyone. Um, today, what we're going to do is we will have uh, a little brief session on what assessments have come out recently. And then I do hope that you will have some questions for us that we can maybe share. I know that assessment is a hot topic right now and a lot of people are worried about how are they going to do those assessments in the type of environment that we're needing to use right now for teaching. Um, so I'm hoping that you as being the people on the so as the speak the boots on the ground um, share with your co workers here how you're handling that. Uh, I know that different states are doing it in different ways. There are some suggestions from uh, various professional organizations as to how to handle that, but we want to make sure everybody can, you know, join in and, and just let's have a sharing session. I think that's what we need to do. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, I have a PowerPoint presentation that will help guide us along the way. Here we go. So for those people that just came in, it's Spotlight on Diagnostic Assessment. And my name is Carolyn Williams, and I am the Test and Assessment Project Leader. Uh, I've been with APH for a little over 11 years now. Our moderator today will be Emily Gramani. She is a research assistant. She is a Braille transcriber, uh, and she's excellent, very detailed. So I've enjoyed working with her. She has done a lot of proofreading for us on the uh, test and assessments that you use in your classrooms. So um, there was a poll that was up uh, as you entered. It said, who's with us today? And uh, if you've not had a chance to complete that poll, could you please do that? Because it looks like TVIs and instructors are winning the game today. Where are those EOTs and resource people? We need to have a few more of those people in our room. If you have any questions along the way of your own, would you please type them in the chat 
box. Uh, be sure that when you do it in the chat box that it's showing for all participants. So that way everyone can see your question and Emily is gonna be really good at helping me keep on track with those questions. She's gonna stop me if she can. So uh, first of all, we have the academic diagnostic assessments that are new that came out this year. So we have an image of a little boy searching in his toolbox. And I'll bet you in about 20 years, he might be a TBI looking in his toolbox for different types of assessments that he can use with his students. Uh, a new one that he might add this year is the wide range achievement test. It's called the RAT5. And another new one this year is a supplement that we have provided for the Whitcock Johnson 4. It's the UEB Math Science. Other assessments that he probably already has in that box are the Key Math 3, the full Woodcock Johnson kit, the BAME 3 test of basic concepts for preschool, and the one for K through 2. In the wide range of achievement tests, um, otherwise known as RAT, it provides immediate feedback to the teacher. It helps determine strengths and needs in reading, math, spelling, comprehensions. Um, this is a test that oftentimes teachers will refer to as the quick and dirty assessment because it is done very quickly. It gives you kind of a brief overview and helps you understand what further testing you might need to recommend for that particular student. This is a one size fits all, folks. This this is going to be the, the standard now for assessments that are coming out because in this kit we have not only the UEB math science, but we have the UEB with the NEMAT. It's all included in the kit when you buy the Braille kit. Both contracted and uncontracted are in that Braille kit as well. There are two forms available within that kit. There's a blue form and a green form, so that way you can provide assessment at least twice a year, if not more, just to help parents help you understand the progress that that child is making. This is also available in large print. Again, both forms are available. Any questions about that? Okay, moving on to Woodcock Johnson for UEB supplement. Uh, this is going to provide replacement pages for those originally transcribed in Nemeth. Uh, when you purchase this UEB supplement, what will happen is you will get a shrink wrap set of pages with the cover on them so that you know which test it goes with. Then what you do is you can just go to your original set, pull out the Nemeth, and replace it with the UEB. Simple. Everything, it looks the same. It has the same title in print across the top with the page numbers going down the side in print. So it will look identical to the rest of what you have there in front of you. Um, the good news is that future Woodcock Johnson 4 Braille kits that are purchased will automatically include both the Nemeth and the UEB Math Science. Uh, Karen, one we have note, a question. Okay. Did he say the wide range achievement also includes science? There are a few questions that are related to that, but it's not a lot of science in there. No, it's, most, it's mostly concentrating on math, um, reading, spelling, sentence fluency, reading fluency. Okay. Um, going back to the Woodcock Johnson 4, um, keep in mind that the contracted and uncontracted are automatically included in this Braille kit. The reason for that is uh, you want to make sure that your student knows contractions well enough to be able to read them with ease. Uh, if they struggle with that, then you want to provide that test totally in uncontracted. Whichever you choose to start with is what you continue with. Um, there is a large administrative manual that you can look in the back of that and go to each item 
and each item will be listed with any words that have contractions and then from there you can say oh got it this kid knows all of these that's not going to be a problem so you say okay then i'm going to give it in contract it or i'm not so sure if they really feel confident in this so i'll start giving this an uncontracted but once you make that commitment, you need to stay that way because that's how the scoring software is set up for this. Any questions on Woodcock Johnson? Okay, the next uh, test, this came out last year. This was the KeyMath 3 Diagnostic Assessment. It's another one of those that can be um, administered by a teacher in a classroom. Um, possibly your assistant could also give this if they feel comfortable in administering that test. Um, it's going to give you an overview what the student knows in basic concepts, operations, and applications using 10 different subtests. It's used for pre-K through ninth grades. It's currently available in UEB with Nemeth. However, the UEB Math Science Supplement is in development and it is nearing completion. So everybody keep your fingers crossed that all goes well and we'll have that out to you hopefully next year, uh, probably in late winter, early spring, I'm hoping. Carolyn, we had a question come in for the Woodcock Johnson. Uh -huh. um, can anyone administer the Woodcock Johnson? Uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, the Woodcock Johnson is to be administered by a psychologist. Uh, you can have a <clears throat> person who sits with the psychologist uh, that's really um, recommended so that the person, the ancillary who is with that person, reads Braille and can kind of assure that the psychologist knows that that student is on track with the items. Um, there is a lot of observation that takes place during the administration of the Whitcock Johnson. So therefore, the administrator needs to be truly trained in administering assessments. It's also highly recommended for the analysis of the results. Um, we also have a question. Could APH consider doing a Woodcock Johnson training? Um, that is something that uh, we are working with um, through, Le through Leanne. Uh, we need to get a trained psychologist in order to give that training um, because there are a lot of things that are determined by the psychologist and that way that the training would be worthwhile. I personally do not hold that degree, so I I would not be a qualified person to do that. Any other questions? Okay. Um, going on with the key math, um, the key math is a large assessment too. And in order to keep the price as affordable as possible, we have divided the key math braille into three kits. One kit is the student edition uncontracted. Some schools don't have students that read only uncontracted, so therefore they don't have a need for that to be on their shelf. Um, then there's the other kit with the student edition contracted. And so if you say, okay, well, all the students that I would be giving this to recontracted, so that's the only thing I need. So that's all you need to purchase. And then in addition to either your contracted or uncontracted kits, you will need to purchase the teacher guide. It's the same for contracted and uncontracted. The teacher guides are, um, when you open your book on both sides, you will have something in front of you. Uh, on the left, what you will have is what the student is actually seeing in front of them. It is provided in print for the administrator because we found out through field review that teachers are more comfortable reading print quickly 
So therefore it's there in print exactly what the student is seeing in Braille. They also see the graphics that they have in front of them. On the right hand side, what you will have is your script, what you say to the student, it will give you an answer. And there are approved questions that you can ask to help that student clarify their answer. That is the same format that is used in the large print edition as well. Um, also, a little tip and trick here. Um, when you're giving the assessment, we suggest that you use an easel to place your copy of the test in front of you so that little wandering eyes aren't looking over the top when you're doing the large print trying to see what you're doing over there. So that way uh, that helps with you and then also in your you won't distract the student as you're recording answers. You can kind of put your your test record right in front of you and that student's not trying to look over in the large print version trying to see what you're doing over there. Okay. And then here's the large print kit. In the large print kit, you'll have three student easels, one uh, easel one, one uh, B and easel two. And then uh, you will also get three teacher manuals, which are accompany each of these manuals as well. Included in the key math kit, you get a test record set as well and then also the written computation. And that is the same for the Braille as well. Any questions about key math? <clears throat> um, Kristen asks, are the Braille versions of the key math three available in both UEB technical and Nemeth within the context of UEB? Um, no, as I said before, we're working on the UEB um, math technical right now, uh, and it should be available soon. Currently, it's in UEB with Nemeth. Any other questions? Okay. We have something for you. Since you don't want to talk to us, we're going to make you answer questions. Um, uh, Emily, will you push this one out mm -hmm. for us? So um, I've just launched the poll, which reads, which of the following assessments have you used? Select all that apply and uh, multiple choice. So um, the BOEM three tests of basic concepts, um, preschool, uh, the BOEM three uh, tests of basic concepts, K through two, K through second, um, Woodcock Johnson, uh, key math, um, Diagnostic Math Assessment, and the Wide Range Achievement Test, 5th edition. Okay, looks like, okay. It looks like it was slowing down for a second, but people are still putting yeah. in votes. This is great. I'm happy to see that there are people using all of those assessments. Okay, it looks like voting has slowed down. So I'm gonna give it um, 30 more seconds um, for people to get in their last vote and then I'm gonna end the polling. Okay, I'm gonna end the polling now. Looks like we got a couple more answers in.
Okay, so it looks like our Woodcock Johnson is is up there at 67% of you have used that. Um, the BAME, 47% uh, have used the K through two and 40% have used the preschool. 47% uh, of you have used the key math and 23% have used the RAT5. So that's good. And I'm, I'm hoping that we can um, get those numbers up a little bit. I know there's a need out there for the test, uh, obviously. So uh, that, that's awesome. Thank you so much for giving us your input. Um, I have another question that I would like for you to respond to. And in this one, it's gonna ask you to, to do this on the chat. What I want you to do is to dream big. What have you most needed in the area of assessments in academic diagnostic assessments that we do not have ready for you yet. Um, we're always looking to make sure we're meeting your needs and that's what we need is what do you need? You have to tell us. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to reflect on that and Emily, let's give them about a minute, minute and a half to write those down and put them in the chat, please. Okay. Okay, we're getting quite a few responses. Right. Um, I see here uh, that someone wants an update to the Jerry Johns. Um, we um, were unable to um, get permission from them to do the latest edition of the Jerry Johns. Uh, so therefore we searched for something that could possibly replace that. And that is why the wide range achievement test was um, put into our inventory. Um, so that it, any diagnostic test that we do, we have to get permission from the publisher. And for some reason, they were not able to connect with us and give us that permission. Uh, at the, um, I see where someone's asking about the teacher guide for the key math. Um, that is not available in Braille at this time. Um, we did that because of the fact that the cost of that product was just rising and rising. And so decision was made that we would not make the uh, teacher material available in Braille. Uh, also a reason for that is because we did not change um, excuse me, we did not change the wording on things. Um, so therefore the adaptations were basically made to the student edition and not to the teacher edition. Uh, 
I see that um, someone is asking about the Oregon project. It is a relatively old, uh, old assessment. Um, I'm not familiar with the background on why that was not done by APH. I have only been in this position since 2014. So in that time period, I've not had a request for that. Someone's asking if uh, anyone else uses Dibbles. Um, could you respond in the chat as to whether or not you have used the Dibbles and what your success has been with using that? That would be great for a sharing. There are five minutes left in the session. Okay, thank you. And I would have one last question, and that is if everybody could put in the state that they're from, because I would be interested to see what uh, states are represented in this session. Aha, we have Colorado, Missouri. To, oh, we're oh, this is good. No repeats yet, Emily. We're in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people. That's great. And I have to thank the people in California and Hawaii for coming to annual meeting. It was an early, early wake up call for you today when we started our first session at nine. I'm going to go ahead and uh, post Carolyn's email in the chat. So if anyone has further questions that they need to email her about, um, it is now in the chat. And this is heartfelt. Thank you to all of you, our superstars. We really appreciate what you do for our students. And for those who joined late, the opening code was DREAM, D-R-E-A-M, and you'll receive a closing code, uh, whatever session you're in, for round 2C. So you'll get an opening code, or you, the opening code for this one is DREAM, and the closing code will be given to you at the end of round 2C. Thanks, everyone.
Hello, everybody. We'll give we'll give you just a few more minutes to get settled in. I think we still have some people trickling in. I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll. Um, you'll have time to answer this. Um, and so I'm going to leave it up for a while so you can just fill it in as you um, get a chance to at the beginning of this session. So this poll is asking about you. Tell us about you. Please select from the following EOT instructor, TBI, ONM, etc., resource center, psychologist, parent, college instructor, student, and other. So hello everybody, you are in Spotlight on Academic Diagnostic Assessments, Information Fair Round 2B, uh, and Carolyn Zier will be presenting. Welcome. We'll give everybody just a minute or two Okay, that's probably about, oh, you still have another two or three people coming in. That's great. Good. Whenever you're ready, Carolyn. Carolyn, you're muted. Okay, now you can hear me. Welcome, everyone. I do appreciate you being patient with us. Um, I'm trying to get this to work. It, for some reason, it keeps wanting to... Well, there we go. Okay. Technology. You gotta love it. That's for sure. Uh, this is Spotlight on Diagnostic Assessments. My name is Carolyn Williams, and I am the Test and Assessment Project Leader. Uh, helping today are Mark Renfro, who is our host, as well as Emily Gramani, who is a research assistant uh, who has worked with um, reviewing and proofreading the Braille for us on the diagnostic assessments. And she is very detailed and excellent. So um, I'm lucky to have her with us today. She will be trying to keep tabs on the chat for me and uh, she'll be pushing out those poll questions. So if you've not had a chance yet to select your title, would you please complete that poll question? It says, who is with us today? Give you just a minute to do that. And then Emily will share, us, share with us the results. I'm gonna give a few more seconds to fill in your answers. So if you could go ahead and fill it in. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. Okay, so it looks like our TVIs are winners. Give yourself a pat on the back. You guys are great. Uh, we have some EOTs, some people from resource centers, psychologists, some college instructors, and people that call themselves other. 
So uh, that's great. Okay, the next thing we'd like to do is um, just start right on in and kind of share with you some things that are going on in the world of academic diagnostic assessments. Um, on this page on the left, you see a little boy who's looking in his toolbox. And um, as I told the folks earlier, I have a feeling that maybe in about 20 years, he might be a TBI or an OMM instructor. And, and hopefully he'll find in there not just tools, but he will find academic diagnostic tools. Um, in his box, he needs to add some from this year. We have added the wide range achievement test, which is commonly called the RAT5, and also the Woodcock Johnson 4 UEB supplement. Um, those are new for the, the catalog this year. Uh, probably down in the bottom of that box, he's probably used uh, the KeyMath 3 diagnostic assessment, the Woodcock Johnson 4, Braille, and large print, the BAME test of basic concepts for preschool, and the K through 2. Okay, for some reason, my slide does not want to advance. Hold on just one second, please. There we go. Okay, uh, the wide range achievement test is um, a short assessment. It provides immediate feedback to the teacher determining strengths and needs in reading, math, and spelling comprehension skills. It includes the UEB math science and UEB Nemeth transcription. Um, this is a one size fits all assessment because when you order the RAT5 in Braille, what you will get is both the contracted and uncontracted. You will also have all of the items that are in Nemeth there in contracted and uncontracted, as well as the UEB math science. So that way you only have that kit to worry about. It's all spiral bound. The reading is in contracted one volume, uncontracted another volume, and then the math is the same way, a contracted and an uncontracted student book. And then there are teacher materials that go along with that. The uh, Woodcock Johnson is the other new uh, product out. Um, this one is providing all replacement pages for any page that was originally transcribed in Nemeth. Um, since the Woodcock Johnson originally was three hole punched and you have the floppy braille binders to store it in. All you need to do now is to take this supplement, pull out those Nemeth pages and, re and replace them with the braille uh, UEB pages. Um, it's an easy swap. Um, I would suggest that you keep those Nemeth pages just in case you have a student that arrives in your school that does not know the UEB technical yet. Uh, so that takes care of that. Are there any questions on the RAT or on the Woodcock Johnson UEB supplement? Okay. Our next uh, assessment is uh, came out last year and this is one that uh, was kind of late coming out so I'm not sure how many people are really familiar that it, it does exist out there. Um, it's the key math three diagnostic assessment. Um, this was, can be administered in 30 to 90 minutes. It assesses basic concepts, operations and applications using 10 different subtests. It's used for students in pre-K through ninth grades. And it's currently available in UEB with Nemeth. Um, the UEB math science supplement is in development and should be ready very soon. Uh, we finally have all the transcription part of that completed. And so now it has to go through our processes and get in queue for production and then it'll be out there. We're hoping for spring, if not late winter for that. The uh, KeyMath 3 Braille, um, in order to help save as much cost to you, um, what we did was we have the student edition in uncontracted in a kit. 
we have the student edition uncontracted in a kit, and then we have the teacher manuals in their separate kit. The separate kit for the teacher manuals can be used with both contracted and uncontracted student braille. The reason we did this is sometimes um, you may have two students that you want to give this assessment to at the same time. So you're going to need two student additions and maybe you only need two contracted so you would not need the uncontracted. So we wanted to give you that flexibility there for that particular assessment. The teacher guide um, is the same. It has um, facing pages on the left. You will find what the student sees in their book. It's going to be in print versus Braille because our teachers communicated to us that they would rather have it in print because they can read the print faster upside down than they can Braille. And then on the uh, right hand side, we have the um, materials that you need as a teacher. It will give you your script. What are the exact words you're to say? It will give you the answer. And then it will also give you leading questions just in case you need to clarify uh, a student's answer. It also comes with the teacher record forms. And then in addition to that, the written computation um, is a separate booklet so that the student can easily turn the pages on their own. That is something that they do versus in the administration time. You basically or they will be turning one page at a time with specific directions for each page. The large print kit includes both the student and the teacher materials. Uh, the manual is set up the same way as it is in Braille facing pages. Left you see what the student sees in front of them and on the right you see what the um, your script is and what kind of leading questions you could ask as well. Uh, we recommend that in the large print administration you use an easel to put your booklet on. Uh, that way the student does not have access to seeing what the answer is since it's in front of you. It also helps shield the teacher test record form so that the uh, student doesn't get concerned about what are you writing over there. So. And um, I guess before we do this poll question, I'd like to know from you, do you have any questions on any of the assessments that uh, we've talked about so far? I'll give you a few minutes to think about your questions. We've talked about the RAT, the Woodcock-Johnson, the Key Math, um, two other assessments that I didn't spotlight today are the BAME because they've been out for a while. Those are really good assessments to use with little ones. <clears throat> Do we have any questions, Emily? I have a question um, from Lily. Which ones were those? Not Which sure. ones were Not the sure tests that, that we talked about? Is. We've talked about the RAT5, the, the wide range achievement test, the Woodcock Johnson UEB supplement that supplements the Woodcock Johnson 4, and the key math diagnostic assessment. Oh, Lily was uh, clarified the last one you listed that you did not spotlight. The BAME. Uh, the BAME 3 is a test of basic concepts. For the uh, preschool, what they do is they assess the student's knowledge of words and actions that are basic to directions and tests and on worksheets. For example, um, what is the first person in line? What is the What's, where is the dot? Is it on top or is it inside or is it below the box? Um, what car is between the red car and the yellow car? Uh, these are just kind of examples. They're, they're looking at words like between, um, before, after, first, second, third, all of those. Um, in the preschool, what they do is they will 
assess 26 concepts and in the K through two, they assess 52, I believe, from the top of my head. Um, this is really a good assessment to use with preschool and kindergarten kiddos to see if they're ready for school. It helps as a predictor of their success um, in not only school setting, but also in other tests. Uh, how can you make sure a student really knows what the concept is if you say, well, I want you to put an X on the first word in every sentence. And if they don't understand the concept of first, then they're not gonna know what to do. They might know something. They might know if you say, put a, a circle around everything that flies. Well, if they don't know what a circle is, you've got a problem if they don't know certain concept words. So that's why that assessment is critical for you know, the preschool age and kindergarten age. It really helps help determine what concepts they need to really understand before they begin their formal instruction. Um, Liz Anderson shared a link for the BAME. So thank you, Liz, for that. Um, and then Amy has her hand raised if you'd like to ask your question, Amy. Or maybe the hand raise was an accident, in which case we'll move on. Um, Lisa asks, any updates on the Brigants? On um, Brigants, uh, we're, we're still working on that. Um, things slowed down a little bit. Um, there, as you know, being familiar with the Brigants, there are a lot of images, meaning a lot of graphics. And all of those graphics uh, are being placed on plates in the braille process and so that's holding things up a little bit but we're getting there but they're making good progress on it keeping my fingers crossed for you guys because i know that's something you really want out there okay if there aren't any other questions we can go ahead and um share the poll yes that'd be great okay All right, so which of the following assessments have you used? Select all that apply, multiple choice. So we have the BAME 3 test of basic concepts preschool, BAME 3 test of basic concepts K through second. We have Woodcock Johnson. Um, we have Key Math 3 di diagnostic math assessment, and we have wide range achievement test fifth edition, the RAT 5. And we'll give you a couple minutes to fill in your answers and then we'll close the poll. Okay, looks like uh, voting has slowed down. If you haven't answered, um, go ahead and uh, cast your vote before we close. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. Okay. Oh, there we go again. Whitcock Johnson, four. It's 68%. Uh, the BAME, 21% uh, for preschool and the same for the K through two. Uh, the Key Math Diagnostic Assessment, 26%.
and the wide range achievement test, 32% have used that. It's great. Um, what I would like to do is um, have you respond in the chat box as to your location. Uh, I'm trying to find out how many states we have represented with us today. So we have lots of different states that are with us today. This is great. Um, what I'd like to do is I would like to ask you to place in the chat box, um, now that I know that you're awake because I see responses coming up, um, give us an idea of what other assessments you would like to see APH work on. Um, you know, you have that opportunity to always, um, sub, you know, ask if there is a way that we could do a certain thing, propose a new project for us, a new product. Uh, I'd like to know what you're thinking of because uh, we want to make sure we meet your needs. We want to make sure your toolbox is filled with the tools you need. Um, we're trying to do the best we can, but we need your help. You need, we need to hear from you. Is there a, an assessment that you said, oh gosh, I really wish I could have this. I really need this. Please let us know what that is. We have a question. Are there any AT or ECC assessments? Uh, there are some. Um, as far as you would need to, um, I don't know that we actually have any AT assessments that um, we have actually put out through APH. Um, I know that we have a lot of research on that, that there are some resources out there. Um, and then also the uh, uh, functional skills um, product has a lot of different types of assessments of that nature as well. Um, there is an ECC app that's being worked on um, and they have an ECC assessment out there as well. Um, that's about all that I can talk to at this point. Um, if you would like to email me, I can try and do a little more research on that and see if I can get you some more information about that. I'm seeing lots of ideas coming up. This is great. Right. Uh, somebody mentions Ting, Ting Su's uh, Access Technology. She is an excellent resource for that. Another question, will the FBLMA be available in an online version so that report writing would be easier for practitioners? Uh, that is a question that you need to probably email to me and I can forward that to the project leader that is in charge of that. Uh, that would probably be Justine Taylor uh, who would be taking care of that because she is the low vision project leader. Right. I I sent the email, but I left off the C, so <laughs> <laughs> the second email is the correct one. Yeah. 
Uh, there okay. are five okay. minutes five left minutes. in the session. Okay. Uh, in five minutes, can you share with the group uh, your best test trick that you've used so far during the COVID pandemic time of virtual learning? I've heard lots of stories about all the wonderful things that TVIs are doing. Uh, some people are calling it delivering porch braille where they emboss things for their students and they drop it off on their porch and then they somebody picks that up and they sit on one side of a glass door and the other students on the other side and i've seen pictures of teachers that were dressed in coats and just you know doing the best they could to teach that student you you guys love your students and I know that you are doing the best you can and I know you want it back in your room so you can give them a hug, but for right now, we just have to do the best we can. I know a lot of people want computer adaptive tests. Um, those present lots of difficulties. Um, and one of the things that we have to be very cautious of is when we do the scoring on those things. Um, we do not have at this time at APH the capability of preserving that data in a secure manner. Uh, so therefore any forms or anything would not be able to be completed uh, in an online forum. So we, we have to kind of look for all the different aspects of, of the issue of testing. Testing is a whole different bear when it comes to things like this. We've got so many things we have to watch for. Okay. Well, I want to thank each of you for joining us this afternoon and uh, I'd like to say happy testing, but I know that's not your favorite thing to do some days. So uh, just have a, a great afternoon and thank you so much for joining us and have a good rest of annual meeting. There's a few more sessions to go. Bye. Thanks for being with us. And as a reminder, you'll get your closing code at the end of round 2C, which is the next session, whatever that might be. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. So the question is, can I make a cup of coffee in two minutes? <laughs> uh, take your time. Don't worry about it. I'm losing my voice anyway. Okay. We'll play elevator music, Emily. No, Emily, let's not push out that first poll question until after we get to that slide. Okay. Okay. That might work better because I'm always afraid I'm going to forget something along the way. Thank you. 
think we're ready to start the session, looks like. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is Information Fair Round 2C uh, with Carolyn Williams and Spotlight on Academic Diagnostic Assessments. Welcome. At the end of the session, or toward the end of the session, I'll post the uh, closing code in the chat and we'll also mention it and I will also include a link where you can submit those closing codes. Again, welcome. Over to you, Carolyn. Hey. Well, I'm going to share my screen with you. And uh, as Mark said, we're in the spotlight on diagnostic assessments. Um, my name is Carolyn Williams. Uh, I'm the Test and Assessment Project Leader. Uh, I've been with APH for about 11 years. Um, thoroughly enjoy it. it it's been great. Uh, our moderator today is Emily Gramani. I don't have her beautiful picture, but you will see her face soon on the screen. Um, she is a research assistant in our uh, area, and she is uh, as well a Braille transcriber and uh, does a lot of proofreading for us on our Braille and, and making sure that all of our items are accurately transcribed for the student. So we're going to have a little spotlight on you right now. We want you to tell us the title that best applies to you. Uh, Emily's going to put the polling question up and we'll ask you to get busy. Okay, so tell us about you. Please select from the following EOT, instructor, TVI, o &M, et cetera, a resource center, psychologist, parent, college instructor, student, or other. Did the poll come up, Emily? I'm not seeing it on my screen. Um, it should be up for attendees. They're um, filling it out right now. Okay. Okay, looks like almost everyone has um, answered, so I will be closing this poll. Okay. Okay, um, I'm going to do a work around here. Okay, uh, so it looks like we have 41% um, of our audience are TVIs or instructors. 10% are EOTs. We have some representatives from our resource centers, some parents, some college instructors, students, and other. We want to welcome everyone and thank you for being with us today. Um, having a few technical difficulties right now, so just bear with me. Okay, Here we go. Um, we have academic diagnostic assessments in our catalog and the First two are new ones for this current school year. So I'm sure the little boy in the picture looking in his toolbox is gonna to be excited because he gets to order these and he gets to put them in his box. And the first one is the Wide Range Achievement Test, fifth edition, 
commonly called the RAD5. And the second one is the Woodcock Johnson 4 UEB Math Science Supplement. I'm sure in the bottom of his box, he already has used and maybe even have some corners tattered from his Key Math 3 Diagnostic Assessment, which is available in large print and braille, as well as the Woodcock Johnson 4 kit, the BAME 3 Test of Basic Concepts Pre-K, and the BAME 3 Test of Basic Concepts K through 2. He's looking forward to that wide range achievement test, fifth edition, because it's gonna provide immediate feedback to the teacher, uh, determining some strengths of the student and needs in reading, math, spelling, and comprehension skills. It includes in the kit, the Braille kit will have the UEB Math, Science, and UEB with Nemeth. So when you order the Braille kit, you will get four student books, one for reading contracted, one uncontracted, a math contracted, and a math uncontracted. Carolyn, uh -huh. um, are you having trouble sharing your screen? Do you need me to share the PowerPoint? It's not on your screen. It's showing on mine. See, that was the problem. Yeah, if you don't mind, that'd be great. Okay, let me pull it up. I'm not sure what's going on. I do apologize for that. Let me try again. Is it there now? Emily, do you see it no. now? Mm -mm. Okay, um, I'm gonna let you work on that for a while and I'll just go on so that we can get through everything. Um, I do apologize for that. I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm uh, sharing because, my screen now, Carolyn, so. Okay, uh, do you have the, on the wide range achievement test page? It's the fifth slide. There we go. You're on the fifth slide? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I do apologize. I'm so sorry. Um, this is the uh, wide range achievement test. Uh, on the right, you'll see a picture of the student books. There's a reading student contracted and uncontracted, a math contracted and uncontracted. In the math, you will find uh, everything that is, it's in, it's been transcribed in UEB math science as well as UEB with Nemeth so that it meets the needs of any student that would happen to walk into your classroom, hopefully. Okay, the next slide, Emily. Okay. Um, this is the Woodcock Johnson UEB supplement. It provides replacement pages for those originally transcribed in Nemeth. Uh, when you got your original kit, um, of the Woodcock Johnson. It had contracted and uncontracted, and it was in UEB with Nemeth. Now we have it with the UEB and the UEB Math Technical. Um, all you have to do is when you order that, you take, remove the pages from your original kit and replace with your UEB Math Science pages. That way, um, it can be easy, easily administered and turning pages or taking them out to present to the student. It'll be in the form that they understand best. Um, anyone who does not already have a Woodcock Johnson 4 kit, uh, future kits will automatically include both the Nemeth and the UEB Math Science. Does anyone have any questions so far about that?
Emily, I've lost my chat as well, so you're going to have to keep me on tabs with that too. I can't see the chat while I'm sharing. Okay. Um, let's see if I can get out of my. Okay, I got mine up here. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, are there any questions about that? Okay, we'll go to the next slide, please. Okay. Um, it's the key math diagnostic assessment. Um, this is an assessment that can be administered by a teacher. It does not have to be a trained psychologist in um, administering tests. It can also be administered by a, uh, an assistant in your classroom who has some background in assessment. Um, it assesses basic concepts, operations, and applications using 10 subtests. And it can be used with students as young as pre-K through ninth grades. It's currently available in UEB with Nemeth, and the UEB math uh, supplement uh, will be available soon. Um, I'm hoping for late winter, early spring. Um, it will be the same as what we're doing with the uh, Woodcock Johnson. Those pages will be replaced in there. Okay, the next slide. Okay. We have uh, Key Math 3 Braille. Um, in order to make this assessment as affordable as possible and to give you what you needed, um, we've divided the uh, kit into student edition uncontracted, student edition uncontracted and contracted. So therefore, if you need uncontracted for your school setting, you purchase that. If you just need contracted and you say, well, I don't have students that I'm gonna be testing right now. You know, I know that all the students I'm gonna test are already gonna know all the contractions, then you don't need to purchase the uncontracted. Uh, the next slide. Okay, uh, this kit is the teacher guides for the contracted and the uncontracted. You only need one teacher guide set. Um, in this teacher guide set, what you have is on the left, you will have uh, what the student is actually seeing in their booklet in front of them. And on the right, you will have what your script is for administering that test, as well as any questions that might help clarify their answer and the correct answer. You will also have uh, student test the test records to record the student responses in for looking at it after you finish the test. Okay, the next one. And then in the large print kit, we've included both the large print teacher and student materials are there. Okay, any questions on key math? No questions so far. Okay, our next slide, please. Okay, we have a spotlight on you. And uh, what we want you to do is to please share with us what assessments have you used in your classroom setting uh, in your school? Which ones have you used with your students? And Emily's okay. gonna- I've just there shared go. the poll. And which of the following assessments have you used? Select all that apply multiple choice. So we have the BAME 3 test of basic concepts preschool, BAME 3 test of basic concepts K through second. We have Woodcock Johnson uh, 4. We have EMAS 3 diagnostic math assessment. And we have the wide range achievement test fifth edition. And while everyone is filling this out, I'm also going to go ahead and share the links for the different products we've mentioned. Those are now in the chat. So if you want to check those out, there the links are provided now.
looks like only 42% of our audience has used our test. Hopefully that will increase here soon. So we have um, the Woodcock-Johnson, 68% of you have used that. Uh, the next one would be the Key Math, 37%, the Wide Range Achievement, 32%, and then the BAME Preschool, 16%, and the K through 2 BAME, 26% of our audience have used that. Okay, and Carolyn, we had a question come in. Okay. Um, because uh, Gail asks, I have a question because I was an educational diagnos diagnostician prior to getting into the BI field. Does APH do all the converting these assessments into Braille and large print? Uh, we do the, um, the Braille and large print for those products that have gone through our uh, new product development cycle. Um, they are uh, suggested to us and that goes through a committee and we research to find out what the actual need is. Um, and then there are other agencies that have done some tests in Braille and large print. Uh, you can go to the APH website and go to um, the link for Louis, L-O-U-I-S. And that will give you information. You can put in any kind of thing that you're looking for, whether or not it's in Braille or large print. And you can find out if there is another agency that perhaps has done a test that you're looking for, or a book or other type of item that you want for educational resources. Any other questions? Okay. I think we can close this one out. And then Emily, if we can go back to the PowerPoint. probably around slide 12 or so. Okay. The one right before this one. There we go. Spotlight on you. You are our superstars. We want to capture your expertise. So what I would like for you to do is I would like for you to please enter into the chat any test that you have really felt that you absolutely needed to have available to you. Now, these are going to be the academic diagnostic assessments. So uh, if there's anything there that you would like, I would like for you to add that in there so that we can start looking into those for you. I noticed that someone has a question here about um, the Louis resource. Um, if you go to the APH website, uh, enter Louis, L-O-U-I-S in the search box, and that should give you the link to that. Um, if that's, I can't do that for right now while I've got these other things going. Um, but if you send me an email, uh, if you're unable to find it on there, send me an email and Emily's going to be putting my email address in there for you. It's cwilliams at aph.org and um, I'll be sure to get you the exact link for that. Uh, no, we do not have Vineland converted yet to uh, Braille or large print. Um, 
as I said, what I'd like for you to do is to put in what you need here. And then also, uh, in addition on our website, there is a place where you can enter new product ideas and we welcome you to please do that. We encourage you to do that. And Denise asks if you have it in Spanish. I'm not sure which test this is in uh, The FAME um, does have Spanish administration um, for that as well. It's included with the uh, English version. version. Um, the prompts are there. Uh, there is no reading in either of the BAME. They're all uh, tactile or images, like visual, large print pictures. Um, the um, Key Math does not have a Spanish um, edition at this time. And then the Woodcock Johnson, there are a few tests that are available in Spanish in that subtest that are available, but not the entire assessment. Are there other questions that we might be able to help you with? Okay, one thing I'd like for you to do is I really didn't want to just be the one talking. I wanted a share session here. Um, but what I'd like for you to do is enter in maybe your best test tip trick that you've used. Um, I'll start you off with one. Uh, for the BAME, um, that's a, that's a test where you've really got to watch what the student is doing. There's a lot of observation that goes on with that test. Um, one thing that we've suggested in the past is to place your student's chair in front of a full length mirror. That way, as you are administering this test, you can watch exactly what the student is pointing to in that mirror because the test is set up on an easel. So it's hard sometimes to see those little hands behind that easel. Uh, so looking at it in the mirror, it, it's a great test tip. Does anybody else have any test tips that we could give and share with each other? Don't be shy. We have, uh... This isn't related to what you just asked, but um, have you looked into doing the assessing mathematical understanding diagnostic? No, we've not had that as a suggestion. We got about five minutes left. Looks like we may have lost Carolyn. Um, but if you have questions, you can always email her. And um, hopefully she'll be back on here in a second. Looks like her screen's frozen. Yeah. I think we just lost her. Okay, well, um, it's the end of the session anyway, but uh, Carolyn would be happy to answer any questions that you have if you just email her and I can post that email again um, to make sure everyone got it. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Hope you have a great rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. Um, opening and closing codes. The opening code once again was dream and the closing code uh, posted in the chat is moon, M-O-O-N, moon for the closing code. Thanks again, everybody.